All right, mister, there it is. You can't get into this mine, we can't get out. It's just a question of the lack of water and who is forced to give up first. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel. Headquarters of the man called Paladin. Oh, uh, Mr. Paladin, uh, Mr. Paladin, I have a note. No, no, not just now, hey boy, later. But uh, Mr. Paladin, not most important. Po- Quiet, or I'll kill you. Oh, he's uh, pretty grumpy today. Hey boy, over at the writing desk over there, uh, amber hair, green eyes, and the... Uh, um, uh, go ask the clerk her name, quickly. Her name, Annette Vargas. Annette Vargas. Yes. It's French. But of course, she had to be French. Is she stopping here? Yes. Good. You alone? Alone. Excellent. Now, I want you to find the freshest, reddest roses in San Francisco, hey boy. And you attach this card and take them to her suite. Oh, yes, sir. To Mademoiselle Annette from Paladin. Shall we say eight o'clock for dinner? Sound all right? Oh, fine. You take his message now? Yes. Uh, what is it, hey boy? Who is it from? Mademoiselle Annette. The what? She said to give it to you. Mr. Paladin, could we have a quiet... quiet dinner in my suite this evening and discuss a mutual friend? Mademoiselle Annette oh, Vargas. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, can you do that? I can do that. This is Frank Knight speaking for Longines, the world's most honored watch. Some time ago, we published a series of advertisements called The Adventures of Longines. It told how Longines watches helped the pioneer aviators, how Longines was first to circle the globe with Wiley Post, first to fly over the North and South Poles with Admiral Byrd. These true tales prove that whenever time is of the essence, the watch of first choice is Longines not only in championship sports or in the competitions at the great world's fairs or in the accuracy trials of government observatories, but in all fields of precise timing. Yet, when you think of it, a Longines is not costly compared to other things of finest quality. Invest as little as $75 in a Longines and it can be your proudest possession for a lifetime. Your authorized Longines Whitnor jeweler will be honored to serve you. The dinner was set for 11 o'clock, late, but Mademoiselle Annette Vargas was appearing in a Continental Review at the Arcadia Music Hall. I attended the performance. On stage, she looked even more radiant than in the hotel lobby, and in the doorway of her suite, more engaging than any woman had a right to appear. You are Monsieur Paladin? At your service, Mademoiselle Annette. (laughs) Please come in, monsieur. Thank you. And do not be formal with me. I have been in the United States now for nearly three years, and I have grown to love what people do with the English language, especially here in the West, and I like it a great deal. Champagne. I'm overwhelmed, Mademoiselle. Oh, you are not at all. You are wondering if I am playing some kind of a game with you. I am not, monsieur. There. Good health. How about Santé? I, I said I wanted to speak to you of a mutual friend. He told me of you. He said I would find you a, a firm, kindly man to be depended upon. Who is he, mademoiselle? Monsieur Lady Kane. Lady Kane? Oui. A lonely old man, Monsieur Paladin. You knew of his death? Yes, I did. Uh, But how did you know him? Where did you meet him? He came to see me backstage at the theater one night in Chicago. 
He'd watched 35 performances in a row and finally mustered up courage enough to come backstage and <laughs> tell me that he liked me. It sounds like Leadhead. Hmm. Then what? Yeah, we dined. It was an enchanting evening. He'd said things to me like, uh, you're so pretty, you make me want to yell. <laughs> he talked of the sand and the sage and the searching and the looking. Hard, hard years before he finally became rich. And then he was old. And then he was lonely. And then he met you. Yes, he met me. And that was the day before he died. He left me this. Uh, please, read it. To Miss Annette Vargas, who has been a wonderful friend, I leave my entire share of the Rimrock Mine. Poor, poor darling. I cannot accept it, of course. Why not? He must have a family somewhere who... He was alone in the world, and that oh. had been all his life. No, he meant it for you. You take it. Keep it. I know what he felt. Oh, but it is too much. I simply can't... Oh, excuse me. Yes? Oh, uh, you and Ned Vargas? Yes. Uh, my name is Vance Crawford, and I'd like to talk to you about uh, Letty Kane. Oh, well, of course. Come in. Yeah. Uh, this is M Monsieur Paladin, oh. also a friend of Monsieur Kane's. Paladin? How do you do? Uh, look, I'll be brief. Now, uh, Letty found that mine, but I put up the cash to develop it. We were partners. I received a letter from him. Apparently written the night before he died, and he stated that he just made out a will leaving you his share of the Rimrock Mine. Yes. Monsieur Paladin and I was well, just... Well, I'll give you a thousand dollars for it cash. A thousand dollars? Isn't that pretty cheap for a property worth a quarter of uh, a million? Paladin, look, I don't know who you are or what you do, but I'll tell you this. A probate judge will laugh that will out of court. Now, it's easy to see what she is and guess what happened. She made a fool out of him. She probably picked him up in a saloon, got him drunk, all the rest of it. Tricked Monsieur him Crawford, please leave. Look, the estate's going to be settled when the circuit judge stops in Rimrock next week, and you don't have a chance of collecting. Now, how about that thousand right now? The you lady know. asked you to leave. <laughs> Better ladies than you have got a lot less than a thousand dollars for one night's work. I you should! <laughs> Now, Miss Vargas, what can I do to help? health insurance that pays and keeps on paying. Mutual of Omaha, hospital, surgical, and income protection insurance plans that pay liberal, long-term benefits. Here's what you need. You need dependable protection that pays promptly. Low-cost plans by Mutual Benefit Health and Accident Association. Mutual of Omaha. Call your local Mutual of Omaha agent listed in the yellow pages or write Mutual of Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska for details on protection that pays and keeps on paying. Mutual of Omaha pays so promptly, it is the first company ever to pay out more than $1 billion in health and accident benefits in its first 50 years. Find out how this low-cost protection can help you. Write Mutual of Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska. If you will carry the gun, I will be delighted to travel. That is the way Mademoiselle Annette Vargas stated the matter. And that is the way the matter was handled. We took the stage into Rimrock, rented a buckboard at the hotel, and drove out to inspect the Rimrock mine. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Hmm? Yes. <laughs> yes what? He told me it was barren. It is. But in a, a beautiful way. Lady would have said pretty. <laughs> he used that word a great deal. It's 
pretty when the sand and the sage change color, when the clouds chase over them. You want to tell the whole world about it, only there's nobody there, nobody to see what you'll see, feel what you feel, and it ain't pretty no more. Poor dear lady. Let me help you down. Thank you. So, how's it feel to be a lady of property? Is this all there is to it? This um, hole in the <laughs> ground? They've only started to develop this mine in the last year, but there's a half million dollars in that hole in the ground. Oh. Why aren't people working here? I've been wondering that myself. <laughs> oh. Down. That explains why there isn't anyone around. Witnesses would be embarrassing. Witnesses to what? Witnesses to your death. Come on. Oh, where? The mine shaft. Careful now. Keep your head down. We're safe here. You all right? Yes. Yes, I think so. Uh, three of them. But they can't reach us back here. But you had a gun, too. Why cannot you shoot them back? It'd be a waste of lead. They're using rifles. That gives them twice the range on me. Who, who are they? That's a good question. Who are you? Friends of the rifle owner. Well, what do you want? We want her. Come and get her. No hurry. I'm not going anywhere. Neither you. Well, that's it. They can't get in. We can't get out. What time do you think it is? I don't know. It must be close to midnight. Monsieur... What is that? Coyote. Oh. Full moon always bothers them. Is there no other way out of the mine? A few air shafts. They're too small to climb through. What can they possibly gain keeping us here? Time. Leadhead's estate is due to be settled in court first thing tomorrow. Oh, I see. And if I do not show up with the will, it, it will all go to that man, Crawford. That's right. We must get past them. Get out of here. Well, you stay where you are, Annette. They'll just shoot us down running. What can we do? Come here. Uh. All right, now here. Take my gun and my hat. Now, you see the man down there with the rifle? We. Oui. You crawl straight for him. He, he will shoot at me. No, he'll, he'll shoot at my hat. On this stick here. And let him. Now, while he's watching you, I'll try to circle around behind him. I see. I go. Be careful. As soon as he's seen you, I'll start around. <laughs> Get back in your cave, Bucko. Looks like it's gonna be a long night. I'm gonna blow your head clean off next time, mister. Nice and still, or I'll blow a hole in your back. How'd you get out of there? I right know. You call your men. Tell them you're leaving. You'll be back in a couple of hours. Call them. Shorty? Joe? I'm cutting out. I'll be back later. A couple hours. Tell him to stay on guard. You two stay on guard. Hey, what's the idea? You have to see Crawford. I gotta talk to boss. I'll do what I tell you, here. That was perfect. Now to show my appreciation. <laughs> Mademoiselle Annette? Oui, monsieur. It is 
now safe? It is now safe. Sociable, up-to-date, debonair. What's this, a new word game? No, I'm just mentioning the qualities that people admire in other people. Oh, I see. If you're sociable, up-to-date, and uh, what was that other word, debonair? Yes, debonair. But listen to it this way. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi, drink light, refreshing Pepsi, stay young and fair and debonair, be sociable, have a Pepsi. Notice how many of your friends are serving Pepsi-Cola these days. It's the up-to-date refreshment. Be sociable, serve Pepsi. The saloon in Rim Rock was set up as a court with a small table at one end for the judge. He was a flinty-faced man in his late 60s. The room was crowded with miners and prospectors. Order! All right, now, let's come to order. First order of business before this court is settling the estate of Leadhead Kane. All interested parties present? I believe I'm the only interested party judge by the name of Crawford, Mr. Kane's partner. Well, I don't see that there's anything to settle. Leadhead didn't leave any heirs, so I guess... Just a minute, Your Honor. Please, Your Honor, before you rule on this case, I'd like to be heard. Oh, who are you? My name is Paladin. I represent Annette Vargas, who is entitled to Leadhead Kane's estate by virtue of this document. Leadhead's last will and testament. Now, let me see that thing. Oh, that's a fraud, Judge. That will don't mean a thing. You just can't come in here with a piece of paper and it's say... It's been properly witnessed. Well, all Leonard. right, Leadhead did write it, but he was tricked. Now, you all knew Leadhead. How many of you ever heard him talk about Annette Vargas? Any of you? Of course not. Only knew her one night. Judge, this here, Mademoiselle Vargas, just a cheap entertainer, caught Leadhead in a trap. Which is why I say this here will should be thrown out, Judge. Well, uh, can't be too much argument with no. that. I hereby declare... Just a minute, Your Honor. Aren't you going to hear my side? I can't see that you got one. I assure you I do, Your Honor. All right, but make it short. The question to be decided here is, was Leadhead coerced or even seduced into making this will? And it's up to you to answer that question to my satisfaction. I'll be glad to try, Your Honor, but to a jury. Sure. Well, this is no criminal case. I believe it is. Because if Mr. Crawford's charges are true, then Mademoiselle Annette is really guilty of extortion. And so am I. And extortion is a criminal offense. Are you willing to stand on that? If a jury finds against you, you'll admit extortion? I will. Uh, you go to jail. You and that Miss Vargas, too. I realize that, too. Uh, all right. It'll take a while to pick a jury. Well, it doesn't have to be a full panel, Your Honor. Any six men or four men. Uh, all right, you. Hey, Judge, you over there and you, you oh, at the bar. Just, just a minute, Judge. I don't know that this here is legal. I've never uh, seen these men in my life. It's his yeah. neck. All right, come up here, all right. Now, sit down there and listen sharp. All right, go ahead, Mr. Paladin. Gentlemen, I don't know anything about you. But in each one of you, I see something of Leadhead Kane. It's in your eyes. Loneliness. That look was in Leadhead's eyes, too. Now, he struck it rich. He could buy anything in the world except what he really wanted. Affection, understanding, friendship. Then one night, he went to a theater, and he saw a pretty girl on the stage. And he went to see her again and again until at last he met her face to face. Like you see her now. Mademoiselle Annette, will you please stand? Now, put yourself in his place that night. He had her to talk to, to laugh with him, to sympathize with him, to listen as he spoke of his loneliness and his despair, and to love him a little bit. Now, gentlemen, I ask each of you to be Leadhead Kane for just one second of that night. And then tell me, what would you have done? The same dang thing old Leonard did. Surely appreciated it. Order! 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 Order. Order. Well, this 
is highly irregular, but a verdict's a verdict. This will of Leadhead Cain's leaving his share of Rimrock Mine to Annette Vargas is proper and valid. Well, the papers from Rimrock County came through today. There's your mine. Now that I have it, what shall I do with it, monsieur? Let it sit if you wish. It'll be a very nice income for the rest of your life. Well, I have an income for the rest of my life. Ah, oh, those old men. Those wonderful, keen searchers for things in the ground. I will always see their eyes and feel their loneliness. Oh, uh, here are the glasses, Mr. Paladin. Uh, thank you, hey boy. Did you open the wine, please? Oh, yes, sir. Shall I pour? Yes, you pour. So, shall we drink to the mine? No. No, I would like to drink a toast to something else. To Letty. And so would I. To Letty Kane. You folks who enjoy the action and suspense on Have Gun Will Travel will want to read the tense, exciting story of Kurt Sump in the current issue of Look magazine. Kurt was shot at, his wife beaten by hoodlums, his son viciously taunted by schoolmates, and the town turned its back on Kurt Sump and his family. Why? Is it because Sump is a Jew in Germany? Were the bullies that attacked him and destroyed his business really just rowdy hoodlums? Or does this signal a new wave of anti-Semitic terror in Germany? Find out in Look magazine. Learn in Look how this brave family fought back why did American soldiers come to their aid? How did local and national authorities react to this brutality? Don't miss this chilling behind-the-scenes story in Look of a man's lonely fight against bigotry and hatred. For a gripping story of heroism and hate, read Hitlerism in 1959, A Jew's Fate in Germany. It's in the latest issue of Look magazine at your newsstands now. Get Look today. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Albert Alley and adapted for radio by John Dawson. Featured in the cast were Lynn Allen, Joseph Kearns, Harry Bartell, and James Nusser. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel.